except to help them get on their knees. If they're feeling called, if they're feeling uh, drawn to or, 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 or Jesus said, if any man thirsts, let him come. Bring them. Show them. <coughs> David. Psalm 16. I want to read the whole psalm. It's 11 verses. David understood the importance of having confidence in God and not in himself. Confidence of the, in the one that is in control, the one that is in charge. Confidence in Jesus. Confidence in God. Psalm 16. Preserve, preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, Thou art my Lord, my goodness, extendeth not to thee, but to the saints that are in the earth, and the excellent, and the whom and all children. Their sorrows shall be multiplied, that hasten after another God. Their drink offerings of blood will not offer, nor take up the names to my lips. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance, and of my cup thou manifest my lot. The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have godly inheritance, goodly, inher goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad, and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope. For that will not leave my soul in hell. Neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. That will show me thy path of life, and thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Everything you could ever want, you could put all your confidence in God is going to take care of it. He came, he was crucified, he was buried, he rose again, he did all of those things so that you would have confidence in him. And yet we, we tend to try to find confidence in ourselves and in the things of the world. We put our trust in things that we put our trust in training wheels that bend and dump us on our side. They used to make really good training wheels and then they made the little cheap ones. Well you bought the cheap ones because you weren't going to use them that long. And you're right, you weren't going to use them that long. The wheels wear out, they bend and you find yourself on your on your elbows. How many just had skinned up elbows riding a bicycle? <laughs> Yeah, everybody raised their hand. But see, our confidence is in such such immaterial things when our confidence needs to be in God. And all the things that God has done in our life, it has been to bring us closer to Him and to talk, teach us to trust Him more. We go into, into, into areas and into, into places where God wants to use us to do things in our confidence. We have no confidence in ourselves, so we don't. Our confidence needs to be in God put me here and God has a purpose. And God will fulfill His purpose if I'll just relinquish to Him. If I'll remember who's in charge. If I'll remember that every, every circumstance of my life, every event, everything that happens is orchestrated by the one that's in control. As long as I relinquish my confidence in myself, I don't, I don't have anything. I didn't bring anything into this world and I guarantee I'm not going to take anything out. Jesus tells us, don't store up treasures for yourself here on this earth. Store up your treasures in heaven. Think about that next time you're having an opportunity to you see someone that you feel like maybe they need to be prayed for or, or, or you just feel compelled to ask somebody if you can pray for them. Don't let your failures or your confidence outweigh your opportunity to be a blessing to somebody else so that God can bless you. That's what He's wanting to do. He's wanting to, God always works both sides of the street. He's not putting you in a precarious situation. He's wanting to bless you and use you to bless somebody else. And He will do it. And He will do it over and over and over. And, and the more you allow Him to do it in your life, the more confidence you're going to have in Him. Then I can't do it. How do I do that? I shared before, when I was first started playing music with my dad, I wouldn't even sing. I would get so nervous talking in front of people I couldn't even talk. No, not me. No, go ahead, I'll stand over here in the corner. This is my... But see, and I, and I, not, nothing has changed about me. Other than God gives us opportunities and He shares through His opportunities how He can use, how He can do, and how He can have things happen. And people say, that's a great sermon, Pastor. 
Well, thank you. Because a lot of times it's on to the next I don't even remember. I, when we first started the two services, I was going to use the same sermon at 8.30 and 11. doesn't work because I can't remember from 8.30 to 11. <laughs> and God already knew that. And God already knew he would give me all that I needed for 8.30 and for 11 and for 6 and for Saturdays when we had Saturdays. He'd just give it all to me. And my confidence became that he brings it. He delivers it. It's not, it's not anything. I have, I have nothing, to, again, nothing to offer. It's all that he does. He gets all the glory. People say, have you, have you got your sermons done for this week? He does. He knows what it's going to be, and he'll send it to me when it's time for me to have it. And sometimes it's on Monday, Tuesday, by Wednesday, they're all done for the week, and sometimes it's Saturday. Doesn't matter. I don't get concerned about it. Because I'm sure that if I don't get any kind of message at all, all week long, we'll just play music all Sunday. It don't matter. <laughs> he knows. And he will put it together the way he wants it to happen. So she came to me this week. She said, um, what music are you doing? This was the last week and this week. What music are you doing Sunday night? I said, I don't know. I thought you were going to tell me that. <laughs> she said, well, I'll pray about it. So she came back and said, yeah, God said we're going to do music on Sunday night. Amen. There he is. He's in control. I have confidence 100%. Whatever needs to happen, he'll make it happen. I had a bunch of little odd jobs here around the church that, that needed to be done. And they're there and they're not going anywhere. <laughs> um, they'll get there. And so... A guy calls on the phone and says, Pastor, do you have any little odd jobs that you need done? I sure do. I said, I can probably scrounge up a day's worth of work for you to do if you want to come by church, help you out a little bit. He lives out in the desert, and he's pretty content there, so a little bit here and there, he's pretty happy. He worked here three days last week, and he'll be back here tomorrow. God just keeps providing you know, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And now one of the guys here in town is starting a big project on Monday in Casa Grande, taking down a big building and moving it and putting it back up. And I think he's probably going to hire Greg to help him out for a couple of weeks. See, God's in control. It's, my confidence is knowing that if I need something or something needs to happen, God will make it happen. I don't have to get overexcited in my own confidence about, well, how am I going to do that? I don't know how I'm going to do that. Ronnie used to ask me all the time, well, what about this? What about this? And I used to tell Ronnie, I'll tell you when it's over. <laughs> When the service is over, I'll tell you how it was going to happen. <laughs> Until then, I have no idea. And the greatest thing of all is it's such a tremendous blessing to watch God work through your a willingness to allow Him to. Amen. See, that's the hard part is letting go of my own self and say, okay, God, you just do it however you want. And you would be amazed if you'll give God the reins that He'll take them. And He'll put you right where He wants you to be. And He'll be like, Wow. How did I get here? What am I supposed to do here? We talked about the Alaska trip. <clears throat> and this year we just felt like the Lord was telling us, no, you need to be home this year. You need to stick home this year. We will, I will ask Sandra to get to see if she could, we could get us into Point Lake. That was one of the little villages on the western side of the slope. And that was our, that's what we felt like our, our direction was when we went to Alaska was to reach the, the little villages, all the little uh, Eskimo villages. And, and Sandra said, I didn't get any reply. That, you know, what is there, 250 people in Point Lake? Tom, it's not a big bunch of people. Well, we had, going up there, we met Pastor Tad at the Baptist Church, and we ministered with him, and he's ministered with us while we've been up there the last two years. And so now this church now supports his ministry up there. And this last, in the last few months, Chad, he's now on, on the fire and rescue team up there. He volunteers on that. He went to Point Lake. He's a pastor, but he's on fire and rescue. So God used all of that put together, us going up there and helping him and getting and inspiring him and, and supporting him, that now as a, as a fire and rescue guy, he gets to go as God's fire and rescue guy to all these little villages. See, we were counting on, well, God sent us to go do it. We got we to get her done. And God said, no, you just go do what I have for you to do, and I'll take over. I'll inspire. I'll put the people in place. I will send those that need to go to where they need to go the way they need to go. You just do what I tell you to do. When I tell you to stop, you need to stop. Amen. And he works through that and he does amazing things. Who knows what he's going to do this year? 
That's what we're, that's what that's what our our excitement is now. Is 2018? God's going to do something different. He's going to go another direction. He's going to do something. I don't know what it is. I'm not even going to try to figure it out. One of these days, it's going to go boom. There. Okay. Now do that. Whoa. Who to thunk it? And that's how. It, that's what's amazing is learning when we see God doing it. Learning to put our confidence in what He's doing. There's a reason. That God puts people in their life. There's a reason that that man called me at 6 o'clock this morning. God is going to do something. I could go rushing out there and make my own plans and try to hurry it along the way. <coughs> or I could say, okay, God, I'm right here. Whatever it is that I'm supposed to do, if I'm supposed to do anything at all, show me and I'll do it. Otherwise, I'm going to sit right here and I'm going to be ready and I'm going to be willing. And so whatever the circumstances are right, you'll put them into place and something will happen amazing. And I'll go, wow, God is good. Because I have confidence in Him. I don't have to wonder when or how He's going to do it or if I'm going to be ready when He does because He'll prepare me before the day comes. He'll put everything into place if I'll allow Him and then it'll just happen. And I'll realize that I don't have any confidence in myself. My confidence is knowing that God is going to do it. However He's going to do it, it's going to be marvelous. It is going to be amazing. It is going to be more than I can even conjure. I, I tell the guys that all, who, who thought this all up? He planned it way before the foundation of the world. This was all planned out. That's what's hard for us to, to wrap our little minds around because we're just here for a short spell. And God planned 6,000 years so far all out before He started. He tells us in his word, in his word, before the foundation of the world, this was all put together. It's going to work out. Oh, our country's going to going to hell in a handbasket. Oh yeah, it probably is. I don't know how that turns out, but I know because the Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, will turn from their wicked ways and turn towards me, I will heal their land. That's my part. That's my part. That's what he asked me to do. That's what I have to do. I have to remember to pray, and I have to remember to have confidence in what he's doing, and know that he, and he tells us in his world, all people that are in power, he puts there. Yeah, but what about that crazy guy over in North Korea? God picked him. He put him there. He has a plan. He has a purpose. Something is really going to happen. And maybe we won't ever live long enough to see any of what's going to happen, but God knows how it's going to turn out. So just remember, my confidence needs to be in what He is doing. This old world's going to walk along and go along and we're going to go to work and we're going to do things and we're going to come home and we're going to do all these things that we do. But God is in control of the big picture. And my confidence is what He's going to do because when I take time to recognize what He's doing, like I said, when you look back at your life and say, how many times can I just thank God for what He did? He's still doing it. He didn't stop. And He's not going to stop. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'm never going to let you down. If you'll just remember who I am. If you'll just remember to give <coughs> your all of your confidence in what He is doing, He will bless your life. And you can walk. What did David say? Well, thou, thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one, the holy one to see corruption. Thou wilt show me thy path of life, and in thy presence is the fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's all I need to know. Thank you, David, for writing that down, because that's what my confidence is in, is that if I just serve him, and I just be open to, to recognizing that he's in control, my confidence in him, my pleasures are fulfilled. All the pleasure of life is just laying in my lap if I just let God be in control. And follow his, let him have the reins. Let him lead my steps. Let him show me the way. And when I'm not sure which way to go, I just said to what Leroy always said, don't move on a maybe. Wait and see what God's going to do. He, he's not in a hurry. He doesn't have to be in a hurry. He knows how it works out. We're the ones that get in a hurry and decide, okay, it's time to get something done. I'm tired. We're, we're like those, those, the picture of those two buzzards sitting on the power line. Okay, no more patience. I'm going to kill something. I'm done waiting. Lord, I'm going to do something. I'm going to do it on my own. God says, okay. You'll be back. We'll come back to, oh, Lord, I messed up. So instead of messing up, instead of having confidence in her, I can't do anything. I can do all things 
through Christ. Which means I can't do anything by myself. Except get in trouble. We're good at that. <laughs> except find myself in a place I don't want to be doing something I don't want to be doing. That's what Paul wrote about. Why is it that I do the things that I don't want to do? Because he's talking about himself. He's not talking about when he's operating at the hand of God. Let God have your confidence. Learn to build your confidence. And you know what? God's going to get it done. Last night we got up on the stage all ready to go. Music all lined up. We had a plan. And we just let God take over. You can hold ye hallelujah sign upside down and it works just as good as it does right side up. Amen. Don't it? Yeah. I didn't know it was upside down. God did. He was the one laughing the hardest. Watch Dennis. He'll do it. God is good. All the time. All the time. All the time. God is good. There's not a time that He's not. There's not a time that He wants you to be sorrowful or, or, or in pain or hurting. Or He wants to take care of all of that, but you got to have trust Him. you got to have confidence in Him. Okay, Lord, I'm counting on you. I'm counting on you. Thanksgiving, the day before Thanksgiving, I tore all these muscles right here in the back of my arm out. I stepped out of the motor home and my arm got stuck in the handrail. And I thought I was going to cry. I walked around stomping on the gravel for a while. And I didn't really believe that I would ever get all that strength back. I mean, you could feel that muscle. Was, there was nothing there. It was just like reaching right to the bone. I just prayed. Went to the chiropractor, and he said I needed a physical therapist. And I said, no, 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 no. I just wanted to make sure my back wasn't out, but he didn't take time for that. He said, well, God knows he'll fix it if it needs to be fixed. Well, for the first time since Thanksgiving, I can actually reach to my dresser and put a glass of tea up there with this hand. The strength is back. God restored it. It seemed like a long time to me, but that was just Thanksgiving, November, December, January, February, four months. 120 days, God fixed it. I just had to pray for 120 days. That was easy. All my comments, okay, God, if you want to heal, you healed it. And I'm just going to pray every day, morning and night, if I have to. Whatever, whatever the Lord says, you need to pray, okay, I'll do that. That's my part. That's what I have to do is be obedient to him. When he calls me to pray, he calls me out to say, hey, come talk to me for a little while. Okay, I'll stop what I'm doing and I'll go pray. And he takes care of it. He takes care of all of it. He's amazing. Our confidence has to be in what he's going to do, not what I'm able to do on my own. He's going to do it. He's going to take care of it. We've got a couple of songs we're going to close with. Just remember that the next time things are seem a little uh, disarrayed and not all going right or not sure. You know, remember that God knows. And He put those things in place because He may have used those things just to get your attention. To call you back and say, hey, are you going to pray or are you going to worry about it? <laughs> How many times have you heard somebody say, well, all I'm worried about, when I, when I hear that, when I even think of it myself, well, all I'm worried about is it tells me right then I need to stop. I need to stop that worrying about anything because I don't have the ability to change anything except how much I pray. I have the ability to change how much I pray. That's what I have the ability to change. And my confidence is in Him and if I just pray, He'll take care of it. He'll make it all happen. He'll bring it to a place. We had such a great time last night. We just got to praising the Lord and thanking the Lord and enjoying each other and enjoying the crowd and the crowd enjoying us and it just, we could have, I could still be there. I, I wasn't ready to quit. I was ready like, okay, we just... We just got this train going good up here. We need to keep on going. We need you on a Friday night, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's confidence. <laughs> confident we can do it on Friday night. Amen. All right, here we go.